So guys, allow me to apologize to you for this right now, but I did not mean for this to become an entire 16 minute monologue where you are just going to be listening to my voice the entire time, but it kind of has to become that because in the midst of audio issues with the two PC setup, this gameplay doesn't actually have any audio. But if you were the type of person who wanted that sort of thing, then here you go. We have a Predator only Reforge run. I thought this would be a pretty interesting challenge run to do, and it did become interesting in more ways than one, and one of those ways being that this was a more difficult than I thought it would be and B it ended up being kind of weird at the end and I'll tell you why but what is up everybody my name is Trevor I go by the Mr. Trails welcome to the channel if you have not done so already please consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing to the channel and head over to the twitch today I've decided to start picking up Mondays and not only are we going to be playing Dauntless for a while but then we are going to transition into Mario Monday where I'll be playing Super Mario 64 16 star speed runs and these are just sort of to get me prepared for the subathon that will be be coming out in about 10 days with Radiant Escalation, the 1.10.3 patch. A lot of things are going to be happening on the Twitch, so go over there, drop a follow. I'm being a little bit more active on there than I have on YouTube lately. And that's also where you will get to experience the bulk of my giveaways. So we are only on the second and third behemoth of this challenge so far, and I have already taken damage three times, including damage from that bomber. Part of the quirk of this challenge is not only will taking damage lead you to lose all of the damage sources on your build, but it will also sort of indirectly cause you to end up taking more damage in the long run because when you lose the damage sources on your build the fight will take longer and the longer the fight is the more likely it is that you will take damage so yes i did actually sit down and watch this entire reforge do a full damage count and put in the video when i took damage as well and we also have a flawless kills counter that will be on the screen as well they'll both be at the top of the screen near the compass allow me to do a cringe youtuber thing real quick and have you guys guess how many times i'm going to take damage during the course of this reforge the number of times i took damage here was a bit inflated because I was fighting Agoras primarily and each time I stepped in a poison puddle it counts as damage. So it might do you good to guess a little bit higher than on the lower side. But allow me to explain a few things that made this reforge feel a bit harder than you might think it is. Obviously with Predator being the only cell in the build that means a few things for the feel of how the build plays. In my opinion the worst of which is the complete lack of attack speed on the build. With the Striker's Tempest form ability we do generally have about 10% attack speed most of the time, however, this still isn't enough to make it feel remotely good. As a filthy Catalyst Tonics user, I am almost always at 27% or more attack speed, and I think generally I'm usually around the 40% range and even up to capped attack speed, 50%. And not being used to having a lack of attack speed is honestly probably what led to me taking quite a bit of damage here early on, just thinking I would have enough time to get certain attacks off before dodging, but actually actually not having that time. But the other main thing that having only Predator on the build means is that usually you have around 100% in damage sources on a good build, but with only Predator, your maximum is going to be 35%, and that is going to make your fights take a lot longer in general. And you could be completely used to not taking damage in any of your fights and being used to good builds and stuff like that, but when you take away all this attack speed and a lot of the damage that you have, it becomes a much harder challenge than you might think. And here we are about eight and a half minutes into the reforge and already I've had a very questionable damage taken. It was from that uh, lava ball hitting me through the Nasher. That was fun. As we move along here in the video, I'm going to mainly be showing you just when I take damage or when I get a flawless kill. If you want to guess how many flawless kills I end up getting in this reforge as well, go ahead. But I will also say that the flawless kills number is also also quite a bit inflated. Why might I say that? Well, you will just have to wait and see. And allow me to complain a little bit about my Eska RNG here. For my first 1 to 13s, I ended up getting a Savit in the first one, and then a Thunderdeep Drask in the second one here. Very pog, very good and great and fun and fair. But honestly, the amount of times I took damage to these guys, you could just chalk that up to being a skill issue. I'll be real with you guys, quite a few times I ended up taking damage in this run was because of a skill issue. A lot of you guys will like to come into the Twitch and say that I'm quote, good at the game. Wow, you're so good. I wish I could be as good as you. But honestly, just, just watch some of these Reforge videos and you might change your opinion on that. But after I kill the Thunder Deep Jurassic, I'm just like, all right, I'm going to go to Terra Escalation so I don't have the ability to get Savit or Thunder Deep Jurassic in these. What made those worse was that I also just had Elemental Disadvantage because I was running a Shock Weapon to use the teleports to get to the fights faster. One thing I would like to point out is we could even raise the flawless kills by like five or six or something because as I was fighting the Nasher in this 
Escalation, I ended up taking damage from the Skarn. But that was the only time I took damage in the fight, so I technically did not take damage from the Nasher, so I technically did get a flawless kill on the Nasher, right? And that's the same deal with this Sportstruck Charog and Scrave fight. I only took damage once in the fight, but, you know, I, I technically didn't take damage from the Scrave, so I technically did get a flawless kill on the Scrave, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, should that count? Should that not count? What do you guys think about that? To play the other side of the coin, I did technically not take out all of Scrave's health bar without taking damage. But in some of these circumstances, I didn't actually hit the other behemoth until after I had killed the other behemoth, and I didn't take damage while I was focusing solely on that behemoth. So could you technically say that's a flawless kill, even though that behemoth did actually damage me, but it was while I was fighting a different behemoth? I guess we could technically end up arguing that it was a damageless, but it wasn't a flawless, right? Is that a fair assessment? So you did just see me go to Boreal Outpost real quick to do a Heart Lily bounty, and I, I do want to say I did waste a little bit of time on there because I did not know where the Heart Lily spawns were. And after scavenging the island and only needing one more Heart Lily, I ended up finding a patch of like nine of them altogether. But seeing as it was a silver bounty, I still feel like it didn't lose that much time. But after that, I ended up here in Hades Reach, and honestly, I feel like I should have diverged from my typical reforging paths a little bit and maybe have stayed here a little bit longer than I did, or just staying in the hunting grounds in general and not really doing the 10 to 50 escalations. Because with these fights, I was usually only taking damage once, if at all. And honestly, doing the hunting grounds and single behemoth fights, honestly, probably would have been a bit faster than doing escalations with two behemoth fights where you are much more likely to take damage. And I honestly should have been playing this Reforge as a newer character, because that's basically where your damage numbers are lying right now. This isn't that different as if I had 35% damage from like Tenacious and 3 Pred or whatever. And with some of these kill times, I think my alt accounts could have actually done them faster. And speaking of that, that is something I should do here soon. I should get on the alt account to do maybe like getting your first legendary weapon type deal. And maybe just doing like a general escalation guide for the newer players because it's been a quite a long time since I think anybody has done that sort of thing. Like, yes, we have done like the escalation skill tree type guides, but just a straight up escalation, how escalations work, how the behemoth spawn mechanics go, you know, things like that. And I think that sort of thing does make sense to do, seeing as Radiant Escalation is just around the corner. Again, about 10 days away now. So about what I said about the Escalations taking a little bit longer, that kind of got negated because I got a Virulent Impact in the first round, but that also got unnegated because I also ended up getting a Bloodshot Shroud in round three of this first Escalation. And a lot of you guys will end up asking me on the Twitch what my favorite behemoth is, and it is Shroud. And to sort of prove that to you, here is the entire fight with this Bloodshot Shroud here while I'm at level 12. I feel like some of you guys actually don't don't believe me when I say that Shroud is my favorite behemoth to fight even. I do usually exclude Bloodshot Shroud from these sentiments though, and the main reason I exclude Bloodshot Shroud is because it's basically a two behemoth fight, but I like to fight the Shroud, not the Shroud's clone. And Bloodshot Shroud is very trigger happy on spawning extra clones. Most of the time he even kills his own clone because he just wants to spawn another clone. I did go into the discipline state in this fight, and because of that I ended up being a little bit more careful about not taking damage because I knew I would die immediately. Speaking of, that is actually another part of this challenge, is taking extra damage than you normally would, because you're actually only running with half armor. You have to throw on recruit gear for your other two pieces. And this can end up making you take an extra 100 to 300 or 400 damage. I think this was most notable in a little while, where I was fighting a quill shot and something else. I think it was a Pangar on round 4. The minimum that a lot of their attacks were doing ended up being around 5 to 600 damage, and some of those attacks ended up being a thousand or more damage. But you might be wondering, why am I showing you this entire Bloodshot Shroud fight and not really a ton of the other gameplay besides the damage being taken? And the reason I am showing you this whole fight is because I technically did do a damageless kill against the Bloodshot Shroud as well as its clones. However, I did take damage in this fight one time to the Thorn Pods modifier. And you know what I say to that? I say, screw you, it doesn't count. It was a flawless kill. You can be mad. You can dislike the video and everything if you want to. But I also want to use this time to push a little narrative is that like Bloodshot Shroud, should it really even be in 10 to 50 escalations? In this fight, I have virulent impact. I have 21% crit chance minimum because I have 10% from discipline, 9% from the escalation skill tree and 2% from the Slayer's Path. I took damage one singular time, not even two the behemoth, and this fight still took over three minutes to complete. And I get that Predator is the only thing on my build, but against pretty much any other behemoth at this stage, it would have only taken a minute and a half or so to get past round three, we, even with Predator being my only cell on my build. Especially 
especially because I have Virulent Impact on. But Bloodshot Shroud has a ton of HP. And not only does it have a ton of HP, but it also has clones, and those clones have quite a bit of HP as well. And in certain situations, like, you're not just going to be able to ignore the clones forever, so you do actually have to deal with those clones sometimes. But I think most people would agree that Bloodshot Shroud Round 3 is genuinely more difficult than the Escalation bosses themselves. But I should also say that Shrouds are actually a pretty easy behemoth to fight when you actually know them and get the mechanics for them down. Even at the beginning of my time back on Dauntless, I felt like Shroud was honestly my favorite behemoth to fight, and that's why it ended up becoming my first top 100 behemoth. So there's a bunch of rambling for you, and there is a dead Bloodshot Shroud, where I only took damage to the Thorn Pods modifier, so I'm gonna count that as a flawless kill, okay? Okay. Part of me just felt like if I didn't show this entire fight, you guys wouldn't believe why I would be counting this as a flawless kill. Or did I actually take damage in that fight, and my shield just prevented it from being shown? Let me know, I, I just couldn't be bothered to ask and look through it again. But all right, we had Quill Shot Scarn round four of this escalation. I took damage to the Scarn from its like rock spike thing, but ended up not taking damage for the rest of that entire fight. So if we're going to be counting like fake flawless kills, then there's another one for you. And then of course we had Agoris and poison is hard to avoid, okay? So I ended up taking three damage hits there in that fight. I guess you should technically say that I did take damage quite a few more times than I actually did in these Agoris fights because I only counted the time times I stepped into the poison as the poison damage and not the actual poison damage over time once I was already in the poison. But I'll be honest, who could be bothered to actually go and count all of those damages? I could not, certainly could not be me. Counting up all of these damage instances in the first place is something I usually wouldn't do for something like this. So, uh, you know, I, I already gave you a big treat in that regard. So here you go. Also, allow me to complain about that scrape fight. I, I took damage to like ice shards from the wing attack twice in a row and not the actual wing itself. I feel scammed. And yeah, you see, here's what I was talking about, the Quill Shot and Pangar fight. I took a lot, a lot of damage from not having the extra armor pieces on here. I think Quill Shot's, like, charging forward attack would usually deal around 600 damage, maybe, but here it did my entire health bar a lot of the time. And from this and the upcoming Agarus fight, you can kind of just see how taking damage once or twice can really make you take more damage instances than you really should during the fight. I think in the sense of trials, you lose like five to 10 seconds usually if you lose Predator once. So if you continue to take damage and lose Predator, just imagine how much time you're actually adding to these fights when Predator is your only damage source. Being left with only base damage to help you out truly sucks. Coming up here though, you will see why I end up saying that the flawless kill count is a little bit inflated, and that is because we ended up going to Emberthorn Cove here to get a couple of kills. The main reason I did this sort of thing was to balance out like my kill X number of behemoth bounties to give another behemoth or two to make it so I can claim them after an escalation. And we'll get to it when we get to it, but this was not the only time that this happened. So it's about here when I start skipping ahead a little bit in the damages, and part of that is simply because this fight was horrible. It was the fight with the Emberman and Pengar, and honestly, we aren't going to talk about it. If you if you guys get this video to 500 likes, then maybe, maybe I'll throw an extra video up talking about this. But all you need to know is that the fight sucked, and we'll leave it at that. And speaking of likes, let me just put it out there that liking the video and subscribing to the channel when, you know, I ask to is genuinely more of a help than you guys really understand, especially the subscribing part if you're just watching all the videos and you were not subscribed. Because of my analytics page, the past 28 days we've had 69,000, nice, unique viewers. Imagine if just 5% of those viewers ended up subscribing to the channel. That's huge! And just like basically every other YouTube channel, the majority of watch time actually does come from people who aren't subscribed to the channel. So if that's you, just just subscribe, dude. It takes less effort to subscribe than it does to hesitate about wanting to subscribe. Especially if you're this deep into a video of just me rambling about random stuff while I show you some dauntless gameplay in the background of me getting absolutely cloppered by Behemoths. And I think you guys finally start beginning to understand why this Reforge was as painful as it was because I'm an hour and 15 minutes in and we are still only about to hit level 16. Some of you guys might find this to be a bit of a shock given that I do a ton of Reforge speed runs all the time, but so far I kind of enjoy doing shorter speed runs a lot more than longer speed runs, and that's kind of a reason I ended up playing Dauntless for as long as I have because killing each behemoth is pretty short. And here's a little bit of a Mr. T trivia for you. I do actually have a world record in a speed running category that isn't Dauntless related. It is the first level 
available for the individual level runs of the new Super Mario Bros. DS version. Part of the reason I hold this world record is that it's literally impossible to do the level any faster, so 233 people have this world record. But hey, it's a world record. You yourself could have that world record if you just put in like a couple hours of work running the level. But now here we are coming up on the final escalation that I end up doing. You might be thinking, but Mr. T, you're only level 17 and a half. How could you possibly be only on your last escalation here? And I think I'll let the suspense on that reasoning build a little bit more because there's still a little bit more to go before we actually get to that point in the video. So I, I might as well just explain it when we get to that point in the video. And right there, you might count that as the last flawless kill that actually counts number 15 because uh, it's the it's the last one that's like even remotely impressive. And and yeah, now, now I get bullied by some oversized chickens and that is enough to trigger me to get me to just stop doing escalation runs altogether and I end up going into Boreal Outpost to just bully Nashers and Boreas. And before the onslaught of Weird Champs comes in, I think this was actually faster than doing escalations. So this would lead me to believe that on a brand new account, if you were just going to be bounty spamming everything, that it would actually be faster than actually trying to kill high level behemoths. Because again, this reforge basically felt like I was playing on a low level account again, but I ended up clearing level 19 here in about nine minutes. And honestly, I think it would have taken like two escalations to do that and each escalation probably would have taken nine minutes. So yeah, bounties are a little bit overpowered when you aren't really running an end game build. But yeah, yeah, you get the idea here. I ended up killing like 26 of these lesser behemoths and then grabbing some mushrooms and that was the end of the reforge. I did stop my timer a little bit early because I did have a gold bounty done, but I didn't want to use a gold bounty on what XP that I had left. So I just stopped the timer early because I knew I could have finished it in that time if I really wanted to. But hey, you should speed run a game how you want to speed run a game. If a speed run categories rules just don't really apply to what you want to actually do and what makes it fun for you, then you can actually just speed run in a different way yourself. Is it official? No, but who cares? But yeah, that'll do it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the rambling. If you did, then be sure to head over to the Twitch right now, because I am probably going to be on right now as I do some Dauntless and then Mario Monday later. I have been Trevor. I go by the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.